We're starting off by grinding the meat. Five pound um, sausage stuffer. A scale here so I can get all my spices measured out the right way and my meat measured out the way I want it. I've just got some basic math here. Uh, 18 and a half ounces and I'm dividing it by the like the amount of meat that this is supposed to season, which is 25 pounds. It gives me a 0.74 ounce per pound of meat. So if I'm making 10 pounds, I need to multiply 0.74 times 10. That'll give me the amount of ounces of the seasoning that I need to use on my meat. And then same formula for the uh, pink carrying salt. So makes it super easy. A lot of people get hung up on this process, but it's just simple math. That's all there is to it. I got about nine and a half pounds of lean venison. I'm gonna cut it with about two and a half pounds of brisket trimmings. And then I got about a pound of cheddar cheese. Get all the parts in here, nice and cold. There's the stuffer part, I'll save that one for last. I'm gonna run it all through the grinder first and then season it right after. A lot of people can say you should season it before. I've just found that it doesn't really make much of a difference and it keeps the grinding equipment a lot cleaner just to do it after. Just gonna put it all together here. Here's the actual auger that pushes the meat through. Just gonna line that up in here. An extra grind because the meat's not tacky enough I'll go ahead and throw in throw it in through the finer plate all right everything's super clean too so now they got it all set up I'm gonna get the meat tub over here and I'll start sending the meat through the grind Here's my fat See, it's just the brisket trimmings I got from the butcher shop. All right, so I'm gonna load up. And this stuff's like really, really, really still fr almost frozen. Um, and this is off of a whitetail that I got this past season. Uh, a whitetail doe I got near bow season. And I trimmed her up and got all these trimmings vacuum sealed and in the freezer because I knew I was gonna be making sausage and ground meat eventually just didn't have the time that day but right now I have the time there's half of them the deer and then I'll go ahead and throw in put up here about half of the brisket trimmings um, and then this will give me a nice starting point and I'll go with this one I'm not gonna put the cheese through. The cheese goes in last. Found the meat just right there, and that took maybe 30 seconds. So, you can see this grinder doesn't play around. Um, I'll go ahead and load this next shelf up. And there is a trick um, to getting some of this last remaining stuff out. You can use ice um, chunks, but uh, there's really not a lot left in there right now. Because this stuff, when it's really cold like this, it does a pretty good job of coming through there without smearing all over the place. And that's what's important about keeping it cold. And so now I got everything ground. There's about 11 pounds of meat in here um, with the fat and the meat and so I'm just kind of going to do a little uh, original like just a little mix before I put any seasons on there that's looking good right there you can see there's plenty of fat in there um, it's about 25 26 percent fat um, so pretty good fat ratio I wouldn't want to go too much more than that but I also wouldn't want to go below 20 percent so um, this is just what I had. I figured I'd use what I had and then see how it turned out. It should be fine. What I got here is this legs uh, snack stick seasoning. And uh, I've never tried it, but it uh, you know has pretty good reviews and 
Um, a lot of people seem to seem to like it, so I thought I'd give it a shot. It's a lot easier than trying to come up with your own recipe, which last time I followed one out of a book, and you know, it was pretty good. Um, but I figured I'd try this one too. And then this doesn't say to add any cheese, but I figured I'd add a little bit of cheese just because I had some high temp cheese and I bet it tastes pretty good in a snack stick. So let me get my um, scale going and I'll try to get the right um, measurements for the amount of meat I have. So first I'll need to add up the two point. 2.49 plus 9.57 to get my total uh, in pounds of meat. And then I'll go ahead and multiply this by that number. All right, just did uh, some simple math here. I got about 12 pounds um, by that 0.74 ounce uh, ratio that I need. So about 8.9 ounces. So what I'm gonna do here, so I got a little um, cup so that I can put the spices in. But I have my uh, measurement set to pound right now, so I'm just gonna switch it to ounces. And you see here, this is already compensating for the amount that this glass bowl weighs. So if it didn't, let's say I put it on there and it was, you know, it said a higher number than zero, I would just hit this tear button and that would basically zero it out to what's on the, the scale at the time. So let me go ahead and pour in my um, 8.9 ounces and then we'll, we'll get to uh, seasoning. So I'm just gonna pour until I get close and I might have to do this a couple times. This bowl's a little small. So just, uh, just over five there. So I'm just gonna pour it on there, kind of get it all over the place. Mix that together and I'll pour in the next half. 3.92. All right. So we should be good from this point. And I'm pretty much done with the grinder at this point. Like you could throw it through another grind, but I think it's going to be fine. It's going to be tacky enough with the current stuff. So I'm going to get this poured in. But before I start, and you know what? I also need my pink salt. So that's, that's just your seasoning, but you also got to have your pink salt. So I need 12 pounds times 0 0.04. So whatever that comes out to, that's what I'll pour in here and then I'll start mixing. We're going to test out our meat and see if it's good to go in the stuffer and then we'll uh, get to stuffing. So this looks like it's about done. I took an internal temp and it was around 150, 155. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut into it. And see how it tastes. It's got a really good flavor. It's not too salty. The cheese really complements the, the meat. I'd say that's gonna be a perfect meat stick. Get this uh, stuffer ready. Um, now, I have uh, 19 millimeter uh, casings here, and so I'm just gonna use the smallest tube I have. These casings fit on here. They're not, it's not a great fit, but they, it works pretty well. They do make some smaller tubes that you could buy, but they're aftermarket and they're uh, not meat branded. But that's fine, they, they fit on this stuffer just fine. It's just, I had luck with this one last time, and so it shouldn't be an issue this time. What I did, um, one of my takeaways from the last, the last round was, if you get this a little wet, it makes it a lot easier uh, to slide these on. Get a cookie uh, sheet under here, just so I have something to kind of catch the sausages as they come out. If you just cut a little slit on here, it makes it easier to get this started. Um, so just something like that. I won't be able to get this whole thing on here, but I'll probably be able to get a good portion of it. Yeah, 
And as this tube gets a little wider, it gets a little bit harder to get the casings further back on it. So I could probably get it about three quarters of the way back. And that's usually where it stops. This method seemed to make, you know, two foot, three foot uh, long snack sticks. And they get cut up anyways at the end. It's just for the whole smoking process. It's kind of nice to get the longer ones. Okay, that's probably as much as I'm going to get. So at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and cut it off like that. You don't have to do any tying on these ends. You just kind of let it stay. The meat's not going to push past it. It'll probably get stopped, you know, about a half an inch from the opening. All right, so now that I'm happy with the flavor, I'm going to go ahead and I got my meat out of the freezer. I'm going to go ahead and shove it in here. Um, the best way I've found to get it in here without getting too many air pockets is to get it in big giant balls and just kind of slam it in there and then packing it down. There's a big old ball. Just shove it down in there. This is a fun process here. These little these little stuffers takes a little bit more time, but uh, still better than going through the grinder, I think. I'm going to get this pretty much close to the top. I might take a little bit of this out. Just so I can get that going. So that's pretty good. I'm just going to wash my hands because this stuff's pretty tacky. I don't want to get it all over my handle. This thing kind of just slides in here. And uh, when you're doing this by yourself, or even if you have a partner... You definitely want to make sure you got this thing bolted down. Um, it's just going to make it that much easier when you're cranking on this because this thing is going to want to move. Oh, there it is. What is holding it up? All right, so now I'm just going to crank it down. And this thing. It's gonna to start to do its work. So the meat's starting to come out of this, um, come into the tube. And so I'm just gonna help it kind of go along as these, as the meat comes out into this casing. Oh, that's another important thing. It's like, you wanna hold some pressure on the end of this tube just so you can kind of get all that air out of here. Because there is this little air valve right here. This will release any air that's trapped in there. And you want the least amount of air in this whole system. Just so you get less air pockets in your casings. So now I have no air. I'm just going to crank it nice and slow. And it's going to kind of start to do the work. So... I'm barely doing anything, just cranking this handle, you know, quarter, half turn at a time. And the meat's just kind of filling up this casing. So it's, it's really not as much um, assistance needed with these kind of casings versus like the hog casings, where you're trying to adjust the plumpness as you're going. But yeah, this one's, this one, the meat kind of just does all the work. And you're just kind of making sure there's no tears or rips or it's not getting stuck. Now I am adding just a little bit of pressure just so it doesn't take the casing out um, with extra wrinkles in it. I want it to use the whole casing, not have like a bunched up part of the casing where there's meat in. So this is coming out pretty good. I was a little worried that with the cheese in there. It would have, it would struggle a little bit, but well, so far so good. As you're getting close to the end, you want to remember that you got that little slit um, cut at the very end. And so you want to take this off before, you know, you get too close to that. And once you feel like you're at a good spot, you're gonna wanna reverse the crank on there, on your stuffer. 
just so that you're not continuing to feed meat into there and it's coming out the end. So that's probably a good stopping point. So I'm gonna go ahead and just relieve pressure on there. Go ahead and take this off. And anything, anything you got left, like that's stuck on the end, you're probably just gonna cut it off anyways. So don't worry too much about that. But there's your, you know, about two foot, two and a half foot first meat stick. And then you kind of just um, continue the process from there. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna cut a little slit, feed this on the tube and go from there. All right, so there's uh, probably about seven, eight pounds of meat sticks right there. And I actually ran out of the collagen casings uh, just because I had a few tears and I'm not sure I had enough to begin with. I might've been, you know, a few links short of what I needed. But um, yeah, I got about five pounds of meat over here or just, yeah, actually it's closer to like three and a half. And so, yeah, I probably got about nine, eight or nine pounds of sticks over there. This I just vacuum sealed because it's about 10 o'clock and there's not any chance I'm gonna get some more casings right now. But what I'll do with this is just probably turn it into burgers or something at some point. It's gonna stay fine in there. I'll just put it back in the freezer and. I'll move these sticks to the um, fridge and let them rest overnight. And then tomorrow I'll start the smoking process. This took a, lo a lot longer than um, I thought it would, but that's usually the case. And I think it would have went a little quicker if this tube was just a little bit slimmer and I could get more of that collagen casing on there at once. But since it's a little wider, I kept kind of hitting some snags and tearing it, um, kind of having to slow my process down, I guess. But I'm gonna get this all cleaned up, put this stuff in the fridge, get those in the freezer, uh, get everything uh, put up for the night. And then tomorrow we'll throw these on the smoker. I'll probably use the offset, maybe the, the pellet grill. Um, not sure yet, but I'm gonna throw those on, get them to an internal temp, about 150 to 160, somewhere in there. Then pull them off and put them in an ice bath. So stay tuned. Went down to my Cabela's. It's right down the road, thankfully. Um, otherwise, I'd have had to special order some of these off of Amazon. But they had um, some 19 millimeter clear collagen cases. And these seem to be working much better. I can get more of them on here. So I don't know if the clear um, 19 millimeter has a, like a little bit more flex to it than the the darker stuff, but I'm getting some good size links, maybe like four feet links. Um, so this process is going a lot quicker now and I'm almost done. I uh, just had to finish up the stuff I vacuum sealed last night and then I'm gonna get it all on the smoker. While you're uh, waiting for your sticks to cook all the way, it's a good idea if you wanna get some really cold water, you just fill up your heat tub and throw it in your freezer and by the time they're done this water is pretty much ice water and you can add ice if you need to but you don't need to add a lot if you do it this way I'm gonna let these hang on this uh, paracord out here on my porch just for about an hour or so just let them dry out a little bit they were still a little a little moist on the uh, outside but they're drying up pretty quick and uh, it's pretty cool out here, probably in the high 40s, uh, low 50s today in Texas, which is kind of strange for March. So you can see our meat sticks here. Um, you'll notice some of them have um, like some meat coming out of the end, and that's fine. You're not going to eat that part. You're probably just going to cut that off uh, about a quarter inch, half an inch off. And so don't worry too much about that if you got uh, some ends like that. I do prefer to have the ends kind of like this, but it's not a big deal if you got a little bit of meat hanging out. It'll just go right to the dog. But uh, I'm gonna do them all in this offset smoker just cause uh, the amount of room that I have. And it's a little easier to 
control the hot spots on here versus my uh, pellet grill over there. There's a kind of a hot spot in the corner. And with these being so long, I would need to take up this entire, um, both racks. And over here specifically, like, I'm not sure why this, it seems like when the heat comes out, hits this deflector, everything runs up this way. So um, I just have a little bit more control on this guy over here. Um, I can definitely make sure the fire's lower, hotter, whatever I need, just by adding some, some wood. So I'm gonna get this fire going and then I'm gonna throw these on and we're gonna smoke them for a few hours and try to get them to a temp of about 155-ish and then we'll pull them off. let this get going fashioned up a little heat shield right here just because it's the first time I've had this real so close to this um, porch post so that little cookie sheet with that clothesline or uh, clothes hanger should work pretty good I've also seen you can see I've modified my uh, um, firebox here a little bit with some old cookie sheets just to kind of hold the heat a little bit better this thing does a pretty good job, but I um, felt like it could be a little bit better. And then I took some of the existing grates I had from a different grill and put them in there to kind of give more airflow. And then another modification I did for this guy is this right here, down here is like a heat shield. Um, a lot of that heat comes right from the firebox and goes straight up right here. So this deflects it a little bit and brings it so where the whole thing's getting a proportionate amount of heat everywhere, not just one hot spot. I went ahead and added a water pan just because the last time um, it got a little warm for a little bit. So just trying to keep everything, you know, pretty consistent in there. I like to run a split pecan on there after I get my coals going. Um, main reason is I get a lot of split pecan from my brother, the pecan uh, farmer. So there's the fire. She's going. Um, once I get some nice coals, I'll add some of my split pecan and we'll get a nice smoke going. Um, temperature we're aiming for today, we're going to do a cold smoke on these. It's between about 140 to 160, somewhere in that range. like some pretty good coals. We'll go ahead and add a couple pieces of uh, split wood just to kind of get this process going and then we'll uh, 
our meat on. So I like to do a couple of pieces in this kind of fashion. Get some airflow under there. That's usually a pretty good little setup there. And that'll burn for quite a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this, let this catch. So our wood's catching on fire right now and uh, it'll stop smoking here shortly. Like it'll give us a cleaner burn. But uh, just gonna mess with the airflow a little bit. Just give it a little bit more air. So you can see after adding that wood, this thing's smoking pretty good. So I'm gonna let that wood catch. We're getting close to our desired temp. I'm gonna let this come up a little bit above 150. I'm gonna open it up and put everything on. The reason I'm gonna let it go above is just so it doesn't have a big issue um, climbing back up after I add all this meat. All right, so we're sitting at about 175. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up and uh, get the meat on. You can see our smoke's not too dirty. I mean, it's not as clean as I'd like it, but it's gonna be good enough for now, and that fire's just gonna get even cleaner as we go. Oof. Run this like this. I'm just gonna have to do what I can. While it's not ideal, I don't think it's gonna hurt much to have them in here on top of each other. Some of them might cook a little bit faster than the others, and that's okay. We can we can take some off as we go and put some on. Uh, we can flip them around, play with them. So this is about 11 pounds of meat maybe a little bit over 11 and a half and so there's a lot of meat on there um this this smoker is probably good for about five pounds if you wanted to not have any of them touching but i think this is going to have to work for now we'll close this up we'll let it go for an hour or so we'll come back and check it so, all right so we'll let this go we'll keep an eye on the temp if it gets too hot we can always just prop this firebox open, which I've had to do in the past, or shut down the damper a little bit and uh, try to try to get it a little bit cooler in there, but not too smoky. About an hour in. Looking, yes. looking pretty good. I'm gonna flip them around, move all the ones from the top onto the bottom. Keep keep going. Got them all flipped around here. They're looking pretty good. Um, it's been about an hour and a half, so I'm gonna go about another hour and check the temp, see how they're looking. All right, we're about two and a half hours in. Um, as you can see, just sitting right above 150 160 mark uh, but not too hot let's see how our fire is doing it's been pretty consistent yeah and that's about all the logs that we need in there at once um, to keep this temp let's look at our sticks all right so i've noticed that some of them look like they're getting closer to done than the others and so what i'm going to do is start taking the internal temp of some of these and getting them into an ice bath because I don't want to overcook some of these. So I'm going to start doing that now and uh, let you guys know how it goes. So an issue I'm running into is I'm getting uh, uh, hotter temp reads on this end versus this end. And that's to be expected. You know, the firebox is right there. Um, so the heat is it's a little bit warmer right here. So what I'm going to do now is kind of shuffle some of these around i'm going to turn on the pellet grill over here and get some of them on here and then i'll kind of shuffle everything that's over here um, kind of towards the middle towards the back end just so that uh, i'm not cooking anything too hot too fast so i'm going to do that now and then hopefully that'll help the process all, all together 
so this did a few things. Um, one, it got you know a little bit more room to work with, so I got less stuff sitting on each other, and now it'll give me a little bit of an easier way to take these ones off or these ones off first, however it might work out. Um, and I had to do this the last time I did this too. I thought I could wiggle them all in there and get it to work, but it's just better to have more space. So what I'm gonna do now is just close this, let this run at the, the lowest temp, which is 160 on high smoke. Um, it's a little bit of a cooler day, so I doubt it ever gets that hot. What I have done in the past is um, just kind of wedge something in here so that more and more of the heat doesn't get trapped but it does cause a lot of burnout. So I'm just gonna leave it like this and see how it does. This one, I'm just gonna, I've reshuffled some of this stuff. I'm just gonna give it a little bit longer and, and test some, be rotating those uh, links back and forth. So basically flipping them from this end, going from that end to that end, uh, maybe like every 30 or 45 minutes, just so I can get some consistent uh, cook temps. But, uh, yep, still going. It's gonna be uh, nice when these come off. We can uh, test them out. So another thing I did, um, got some meat probes, just so I don't have to keep opening this and checking. Um, but I'm basically going right there in the middle. Um, and I just wanna make sure that, you know, I'm not getting too hot right there. Now, I, I do know that, like, it does cook hotter over there, so, like, I'll continue to keep flipping them around, but just kind of want to get a, a middle of the road reading. And then over here, I got my two probes in. Um, and I kind of did the same thing. Went one straight in the middle on the top, and then one straight in the middle on the bottom. And so with this one, I'll have to keep rotating, like moving the bottom shelf ones to the top shelf, kind of shuffling around as I, as I continue this cook as well. meat probe method seems to be working pretty good. I've already set these ones to um, an internal reading of 140. One of them reached it, so I shifted everything around and just stuck it in kind of the same spot but in a different stick. And so I'm trying to keep everything pretty consistent. Um, I'll let this get to 140 again and then kind of do another shuffle. Uh, same with over here. This is sitting at about 135, and so in just a few minutes or so, I'm gonna open this up and shuffle everything around. We're getting really close to being almost perfect on all these meat sticks. I think moving them in here and separating the load uh, was a good idea. We're all pretty close. I've been rotating them as they reach certain temps, so there was one reading over here on the bottom shelf that reached 150 and so I went ahead and swapped everything around just picked two random ones after that and now they're reading about the same so we're getting really really close I want to make sure I cook them all the way through and don't have any uh, undercooked meat sticks so over here I've been doing a similar uh, model just have one probe but it's working out gonna throw these into a cold ice bath here get my wipe off with this washcloth oh yeah that's nice and chill so straight in and this is gonna crisp up the casings so that you get that nice snap whenever you bite into these and it's also gonna stop the cooking process so that these don't overcook. They got to an internal temp about 153, 154. Um, the ones on my offset smoker are still going. There's a few in there that just needed a little bit more time, so I'm gonna let those roll. And the reason I got this rag is kind of just clean off any of these grill marks. It might be on there. Any of that soot. This is really cold, but this is 
kind of an important step, just so you don't have dirty looking weenies, snack sticks. Some of this stuff you can't get off, but some of it you can. First round of meat sticks, all dried off. Just tasted one, got a good snap. Kids wanted one, gave them some. It's got a really good flavor. Um, I just got a few left. What I did notice is those bigger Cabela's casings, um, they're taking longer to cook because, well, they're bigger and they have more meat in them. So waiting on those and then we'll be all done. I'll get these cut up and vacuum sealed up. Just pulled the last of them off. Um, man, that took all of about four and a half hours. Now I gotta cook some dinner, so uh, I gotta let these soak for a little bit longer and then I'll get them out back in the fridge, ready to cut up. Video is unofficially sponsored by Miller High Life, the beer of meat sticks. Last package. It's gonna be a baker's dozen. Almost got it perfect with the 12 packs, but uh, one too many meat sticks, and I'm not hungry enough to eat it. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and shove it in here, and all are good for the night. This has been quite the project and uh, definitely a time consuming process. And there you have it folks, about 24 hours almost exactly uh, later, maybe a little bit more. That's your finished product. That is a fully processed deer. Um, then ground with some brisket trimmings for the fat. Seasoned, stuffed into casings, smoked, and then vacuum sealed for the foreseeable future. I'll probably put a couple of these in the fridge for uh, the near future and then the rest in the freezer for the distant future. But as you can see, it made probably about 10, 11 packages and uh it was a lot of work but sure is nice enjoying these at the end of the day <laughs>